Hi guys, Toby here for TP23 Productions. Back once again for a game review. This time around, I'm reviewing WWE Smackdown vs. Raw 2011. So, just like 2010 version of the wrestling game, you are put into the wrestling ring. Good addition, I suppose, like I said, with 2010. I guess it's to work out the new buttons and the new figures and the layout and all that jazz. Once you get past that, and you've conquered a few moves, you're shown to the main menu. This time around, the main menu has a picture of the current, then, WWE Superstar. That being The Miz. He's got his mouth wide open, shouting how awesome he is. And just doing everybody sweet it. Then, he's alright now. Really? So the layout to the menus is a lot more cinema themed, as I like to put it. There's a scrolling dot menu at the bottom. Gives you all the information of all the wrestlers going on. It's hard to describe really, but there's been worse layouts of menus. So we come to the death count and the no longer with us count. There are 12 superstars that are no longer with the company in the roster of WWE Smackdown vs Raw 2011. And there's nobody's dead. Nobody dead. Not a sausage. The Nexus are finally in the game. Same with Sheamus as well. That's it really. On the roster. The animations are very cool this year around. There are also little sneak attacks that can happen. I had a quick match of Wade Barrett versus The Big Show. Um, Wade Barrett, music played and he came out from the other side of the ring and did a sneak attack on Big Show. He then, uh, Barrett Barrage as I believe it's called, on The Big Show and pinned him for the 1-2-3. Cool little sneak attack, nice add in motion. You play in a more TV schedule match layout. So even playing as a normal one-on-one -on -one in exhibition mode ends up being uh, part of a TV schedule. So either Superstars, Raw or Smackdown. Here you can change who the wrestlers play against, who the who they actually are, what sort of match takes place. It was a bit confusing at the start to be honest, but once you do it a few times and you get used to it, then it's pretty cool. You can use it to your advantage. There are a shed load of unlockables. These include different attires and a lot of superstars and legends to unlock. And you, of course you unlock them on the road to WrestleMania. This time around, Road to WrestleMania is set out as a third person. You have your own map in the top of the screen. You're over the shoulders of the wrestler, moving around, making them run where you want. So when you've moved all through the backstage area, you've had a look everywhere really, and you're bored of it, you can finally go off and have a wrestling match. There are wrestlers in the backstage area that you can talk to, depending on who you talk to and what their previous history is, then you could either have a good conversation or a bad conversation. If uh, it's a bad conversation, then you can end up pushing them, and pushing them, until they snap and then you have a backstage fight. This I thought was a very cool addition, it's a bit weird controlling a wrestler as though it's Grand Theft Auto. It's not GTA, but it is a wrestling game, so get rid of the third person view. WWE, honestly, Stick to the wrestling games, stick to what you're good at, leave GTA to Rockstar really. Third person for wrestling, not a good view to have. Overall, WWE Smackdown vs Raw 2011 is, or was, the best wrestling game out there for its time. But WWE 13 is the best current, up to date wrestling game that you can possibly get. So in all honesty, this is going back on the shelf. This is going to collect dust along with all the other WWE games. Apart from WWE 13, which is the best one to play. Most up to date. So that was my quick review. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.